Hello, my name is Barry Good from the London School of Business and Finance. And today we're going to be looking at competitive advantage, which is lesson six of the strategic planning MBA module. So what gets you ahead in a race? If you're running a business, it's important that we stay ahead of the competition and that we're able to maintain a dominant market position or achieve a dominant market position over and above those of our competitors. The outcomes of this lesson are really to identify the requirements that can be leveraged in order to deliver value to the market. But what does that mean? <clears throat> Every company is different. Every company has its own strengths, its own weaknesses, and its own characteristics, which make it unique. And regardless of the industry or the market that we operate in, Every company will have a set of characteristics which make it unique in the marketplace and identify it and separate it from its competitors. Now these, are, these identifying features may be positive strengths or they may be weaknesses which the company has to manage um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Ultimately, maintaining competitive, competitive advantage is capitalising or utilising the strengths that you have within the organisation whilst managing or overcoming, overcoming the weaknesses or obstacles that, that, that hold us back. So, looking at competitive strategy, Porter defined this as a means of taking offensive or defensive actions to create a defendable, a, a defendable position in an industry, to cope successfully with competitive forces and thereby yield a superior return on investment for the firm. So Porter argues here that our actions as an organisation ultimately are attributable to the return on investment for our shareholders. And ultimately, shareholder value and satisfying shareholders is important to maintain investment in the business and securing its position in the marketplace. Competitive strategy can be um, an operational uh, offence to penetrate new markets, to capitalise on new opportunities that present themselves, or um, taking action by capitalising on our competitors' weaknesses. If we're, in a, if we're in a positive market position, then ultimately we need to defend that position to ensure that we remain there and that our competitors are kept at bay. Competitive advantage really only exists in the minds of our customers and what's perceived to be in vogue one day might not be perceived to be in vogue the next. It's important for us to be aware that as businesses the market is forever evolving and that it's changing and that we need to respond to the markets appropriately in order for a competitive strategy to be um, identified and delivered. So ensuring competitive advantage is sustained is a critical aspect of business strategy and ensuring the long-term viability of a company. Competitive advantage can easy, easily be lost. We don't achieve a position whereby we're stable in the marketplace. Markets are um, continually uh, affected by external influences, um, not only from our competitors but also from our customers from the political environment that in, in which we work, um, all of these factors can come together to create um, a difficult uh, trading environment in which we have to maintain a competitive position. So competitive advantage is understanding what difficulties and opportunities the market presents and then being able to capitalise on our own internal strengths and weaknesses in order to um, accommodate them. Ultimately, our strategies wear out and the um, business model or trading model that the company adopts might not, longer, might, might not be um, sustainable long term in the future due to innovation of technology um, or new, uh, new um, buying trends, uh, the buying trends of our customers. So what kind of forms do competitive advantage take? Well, there are numerous ways in which uh, companies can leverage competitive advantage. Ultimately, the um, perception of being a better product can be beneficial to, to organisations if they have a perception that their product is superior 
or their product provides a uh, service or, or satisfies a demand better than the, com- than the competitor. So having a better product or perception that product is better um, is, a, is one way of maintaining competitive, competitive advantage. Perceived advantage in the um, marketplace can go with things like price and quality. So, for example, if a uh, company um, promotes a premier product at a premier price, then there might be a perceived advantage to that product because it might be um, superior quality or perceived being superior quality or able to do a better product, do, do a better function, to do a better job than the competitor. Um, competitive advantage can also come from, from the employees that we have within an organisation. So uh, employee knowledge and skill is also a means of um, securing competitive advantage. At the end of the day, a company's success is based on the skills and knowledge and, and um, activities of employees. So if, if um, a, 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 an organisation has skills which the competitors don't, then that can provide an edge in the marketplace. Low cost can also be seen as an advantage in the marketplace. Most, uh, most of us prefer not to have to spend money where we don't need to. So by having low, low costs uh, or products and services which are more competitively priced can be a way of secu- securing advantage in the marketplace. Obviously, there's a playoff here with cost and quality, um, and it's important that cost is, is taken in balance with quality. Ultimately, customers who offer um, competitively priced products with superior quality are ones that are going to dominate the market. However, that, always doesn't, that doesn't always ring true. If you're offering a product which is a premium price product but has uh, significant advantages in terms of quality or functionality, then that may dominate the market. Better competencies um, refers to the um, internal skill sets. So having better competency might relate to the technical knowledge of employees or their ability to work together as teams to achieve exceptional results or competencies to innovate or redesign new products and services. These are all skills that that our employees have that can be utilised when developing new products and services in the marketplace. So having better competencies in terms of skill sets can be the difference between um, launching products which are successful and products which aren't. Superior assets can also be a way of leveraging competitive advantage. And superior assets refers to things like intellectual property um, or physical location. Um, It might relate to um, uh, uh, production methods, tools and equipment, that that kind of thing. So there might be physical, tangible assets or there might be intellectual assets. Economies of scale is another way of securing competitive advantage. Being able to buy in bulk and sell at discounted price means that there's a financial advantage. So economies of scale are often a driving force for mergers and acquisition strategies where companies buy each other out to combine buying power um, and delivery power. Competitive advantage also can be demonstrated through employee attitude or um, the, um, the, the attitude of, of the uh, organisation in totality. So if the organisation has an attitude of can-do, of delivery, of innovation, of change, um, or being able to embrace change, then that can provide competitive advantage, particularly in terms of launching new products and services or managing change or implementing change. So having a positive mental attitude that's displayed through the value systems of an organisation and in everything that an employee does can be the difference between success or failure in the marketplace. Superior relationships relates to the people that an organisation uh, that an organisation deals with outside. So it might be things like vendors, it might be third parties, it might be um, partnerships that the organisation has for delivering product or service to market. And leveraging superior relationships can be a very effective way of securing market position and maintaining market position. 
Often, the barriers to entry into new products and service, and service markets are determined by relationships. So by having strong relationships, which can then be leveraged, that can be an effective way of keeping new competitors out of the market. We're going to talk a little bit about competitive positions now. And there are three uh, fundamental um, positions that can be adopted in the market. Pioneers are um, companies or organizations which take the lead in the initiative. So these are the ones that take product to market first and foremost. Um, and they will um, go, often go with a very aggressive or dominant market, um, um, market attitude. Followers tend to be ones, uh, tend to be organizations which hold back a little bit. They see what the competitors are doing, how they've accessed the market, um, what mistakes they've made, what, what, things they've got, what things they've got right, what things they've got wrong. So a follower is often somebody who is late to market, um, allowing the early adopters um, or the early players in the market to, to perhaps make their move first uh, and, and make the mistake. So followers are very good at copying elements of delivery, um, learning from observing the mistakes that our uh, early, early um, pioneers make, um, and then capitalizing on them. Challenges are those who uh, offer a frontal attack um, and, and, and will often come left field. So a challenging competitive position is somebody who might come and present a new product or a new service, identifying a shortfall in the offering or a shortfall in the current, uh, current players in the market, offer something different and capitalize on that. And challenges can often can, um, alter a, uh, a, a thought process or customer buying um, process or thought pattern in the market. Niches tend to be smaller companies. They use um, specialist knowledge, specialist skill to uh, identify a small element of the market and then capitalize on that. So often niches aren't in, in a position to uh, dominate a market. They'll be happy just to look at the shortfalls or the shortcomings in the general supply and just capitalize on those and, and, and run often very successful uh, small elements or spin-off aspects of a larger market. So, in summary, strategy should add value to the organization. Effective strategy should strengthen the competitive position of the organization. Corporate competitive positioning is crucial to success. And competitive positioning should be well communicated. My name is Barry Good. This has been Lesson 6 on Competitive Advantage as part of the Strategic Planning MBA module.